going, having a job and working for somebody else. Um, what our story is, how we got started, um, as well as four things that you can do right now while you're in college if you think that later on in the future you want to start your own business. And then I definitely want to hear some questions and some discussion at the end. If you don't have any questions for me, then I'm going to make you talk about problems in your life that we might turn into a business. So think of questions unless you want me to call you out. Um, I do want to see you on social media. So if you guys are on Twitter, I'd love to see you tweeting. Uh, if you're not on Twitter, text. Um, because that's the feedback that I get to know that I'm giving you interesting, relevant information. If you're not talking about what I'm saying, then I think my presentation sucks and that you guys aren't getting anything out of it, so please share it. Um, so real quick, um, job market sucks right now. Uh, that's reason number one that you should consider starting your own business. I had this really cool map uh, that showed um, unemployment rates by county as a time-lapse map over the past um, two years. Um, and you can see the, like, the entire United States going from like this light color with low unemployment to this dark black hole of a, of a U.S. map. Um, so no matter what your major is, the job market sucks right now. So that's one reason that you should consider starting your own business. Um, a second reason you should consider starting specifically a GIS business is in the startup world, geolocation startups are hot. Have you guys ever heard of any of these companies over here? Foursquare. Foursquare. Okay, anybody else? Gowalla, that's an Austin, this is an Austin startup. Hurricane Party is also an Austin startup. Um, so there's kind of three kind of big groups that we're seeing in the geolocation startups. Um, these guys are tools. C-click fix might be something that you guys have heard of. Uh, the urban planners, people who are interested in urban planning. This is a really cool um, geolocation startup that uh, cities can use, like so their citizens can report. Um, problems like a water pipe bust. They can view, they're using mapping systems to be able to report that kind of thing. Um, Geo gaming. So you guys know Foursquare, Gowalla, that kind of thing. Um, that's pretty hot right now. Um, and we're just starting to see the geo social. So Hurricane Party, the one that I mentioned before, they just got funded um, here or in Austin um, by a local group of investors. Um, so those guys are are using mapping and integrating mapping um, to do some interesting things with games. Have you ever heard of a startup company called Technology Fast Forward? I haven't. What do they do? Um, they do a lot of, uh, I did an internship with them. Uh -huh. uh, my mom's friend with, is a friend of you know, their, uh, their, uh, their president. It's a startup uh, GIS company in San Antonio. Cool. They do like a lot of uh, land surveys and like, uh, land data, mostly. Absolutely. So are they web-based or are they still using like desktop-based, ESRI, that kind of thing? Mm, I don't know, because I didn't do actually much map editing, actually, mostly, okay. I was just an intern, so I mostly just sure. did, uh, like, uh, I just mostly did, like, building tables, right. so, uh, I mean, mostly, I mean, I worked on a desktop, so, or a laptop, so, yeah. not, not web-based yet. Got it. Them, yeah. Anybody else? Any other startups? I just have a question, are yeah. you going to, um, have that available to us, the problem? Absolutely. I'll throw it up online. So it'll be on it'll be on the blog and I'll give you some links at the very end. Yeah, yeah thanks for asking. Um, any other GIS startups that you guys know about? I mean of course Google Maps, right? I mean they're not a startup anymore, but uh, <laughs> you know, Google Maps, Google Earth, these are things that people who aren't GIS majors, they don't have, you know, the master's degree or the bachelor's degree in GIS, but we're starting to use these kind of tools in our everyday lives. Um, what else do you guys use GIS based? Not so much? Okay. Well, I bet you will in the very near future. Okay, so what is what is Qubit? What is, what is my company? So at Qubit Planning, what we want to do is we want to help urban planners and environmental engineers, folks that don't have that master's degree in GIS, they're not running ESRI, we want to help them pull data from a mapping interface very quickly. Um, this is our company concept. Um, so before I went to, um, before I worked in the startup, I worked for an environmental engineer in town, and we were doing um, environmental impact studies. And so basically, we were looking at road, roadway studies. We wanted to connect this red road here with this blue road without using the yellow road. So we were looking at alternative ways to connect the roadway. Um, and as you can see, some of those roads would have like taken out houses. Um, there were some historic homes in the area. We were concerned with things like. Uh, wetlands, endangered species. So we were using mapping to figure out what the potential environmental impacts were. 
So my engineer gave me three different alternatives to look at to connect these roads together. Um, and every time he would give me alternatives, I would have to go to multiple websites, set down all this data about all those different environmental resources, um, run some calculations, and I came up with numbers. And in this case, we kept getting negative environmental impact numbers. And what that meant was we can't actually build the road there because it would have you know, a negative impact on the environment. And so what happened is, in that case, the engineer gives you three more alternatives, right? And so then I have to go back to multiple websites, suck down the data, run my calculations, and do my impact numbers. Every time I had to go through that process, it was 40 hours of work. That was a week of my time. Um, and so it was really boring work going back to all these different websites. Every time the engineer would give us more and more alternatives, we looked at something like 27 alternatives for what should have been a simple roadway project. We wasted, I don't want to say wasted, we spent thousands of taxpayer dollars and weeks worth of work. So this is the problem that my company solves. That's another thing that Technology Festival Work had. Like, like the when the world work we did with we did with the city, or because we were uh, you know a contracting company, and like they'd asked us for a map, and then we'd finish one, and then like two weeks later they'd ask for the same map only just a new version. Absolutely. Like we just gave you one. Absolutely. With weeks on it. Right. And they want you to tweak something very very simple. Um, and some of the desktop technology doesn't allow you to make changes like that very quickly um, by hand. So, so this is kind of our world um, that we solve. Um, and so Qubit, again I had a little video here, but, but we allow people to do that in seconds. We use a Google Map interface. Um, so in Google Maps, maybe you guys have like, one of you have ever drawn a map in Google Maps or in Google Earth, the same concept. We let an urban planner or an environmental engineer put points on a map press a button in 30 seconds, they have cut and paste ready environmental data to integrate uh, with their impact studies. So we save them at least 40 hours worth of work per project. Um, that's how we make money. Okay, so how do, how do we do this? So um, it's myself, my background, actually I know less about geography than any single person here in this room. I build databases. Um, so I started in economics, building databases for an economist, um, and then I decided I wanted to do environmental engineering. I was able to switch fields, um, and then I learned about ESRI and a little bit about GIS, but it was very painful for me. Um, I wanted a quick way to be able to pull data down um, from a mapping system. Fortunately, at the same time I was going through that painful pro process, I was complaining to a good friend of mine, um, and I was telling him that it takes me all these hours to get all this data, and it's boring, and I hate my job, I hate my life, I really want to just get my data and do, do higher level analysis. Um, and so fortunately, my friend um, was an interaction designer, so he designs how websites flow, um, but he was also a developer. Um, and we started talking about what kind of tools that we could build that would save people time and money when they needed to pull data off of the map really quickly. And so we built this really crappy little tool, right? It was like this list of check boxes that, that people would check. Like, I want data for a state, and I want data for a county, and I want data for a city. Um, and then it went all the way down to the block list. Um, and we put it out there. It was just like a night and weekend project. We were going to solve my problem. Uh, we put it out there, and we started getting really, really good feedback. And so what that's called in the startup world is an MVP, or a minimum viable product. So you always want to build whatever it is. It's not going to be the grandiose scheme in your head that you know you can build. You want to build just a little bitty piece um, and put it out there and get feedback. And so this is kind of a, a, a trend right now in startups. It's called the, the Lean Startup Methodology. So you have an idea, you build something really, really tiny, you measure the results. What are people saying? How many people hit your website? Um, you know, what kind of feedback can you get? So you can collect your data, you learn, and then you do it again based on data. So the idea right now, the, the thing to do in startups is to go through this loop really, really, really fast, making microscopic changes. So that's kind of how we, we approached our startup. We built a very, very minimal uh, demo. That demo allowed us to go raise money from a group of investors here in town called Capital Factory. 